I know what's on your mind. You're wondering with what's happening in the real estate market and how it's all going to go down. Well, stick around. I got to talk with Glenn McQueenie, the founder of our company, and stay tuned. I'm really excited to bring you today Glenn McQueenie, the founder of our company, Thanks, seasoned, experienced uh, real estate investor and owner and agent. Mm-hmm. For almost 30 years, right? Yeah, I'm a really big deal. <laughs> he is. No, just Let's talk today about uh, the market. It's crazy. And a lot of people are, are saying that the, the bubble's going to burst. And, um, you know, what, what, what's your thoughts on it? You know, I think eventually they're going to be right. <laughs> if they keep saying the bubble's going to burst, um, you know, I think it's just almost like the perfect storm right now where you have kind of record low interest rates, you have um, limited supply of developable land, you have, um, you know, baby boomer generation, the the millennials coming in behind it, creating more demand, we have more immigration coming to Toronto uh, than we ever have. Um, I think it's just the perfect storm right now, Ken, and I don't know how it's going to (laughs) end, but it's going to (laughs) end at some point. Um, My biggest concern really right now is I, I just have this almost spidey sense that the provincial or federal government or even the municipal government is going to do some extra measures right now to kind of um, somehow uh, interfere, slow down the market. Because, you know, when you have all these, um, you know, the first of all, we got record prices, right? I mean, prices were up 22, 24% last year. I think, you know, I don't even think this has gone to the press yet, but I probably argue can um, we're probably up 15 to 20 percent just since December probably yeah um, like I was in a bidding war the other night it was crazy you know, last night we had nine offers in our on our listing yeah which is insane and it's just you know and it was price right so it's weird <laughs> so and, and so it's so crazy because we don't even know what value is right and yeah. especially when we were trying to advise our clients we're like I don't know um, you know, people say, well, I'm sure you must know what it's worth. Like, yeah, no, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know really where what's going to happen, but my big fear right now, and I just have this sense, is that the government's going to interfere somehow. Yeah. And I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't know if it's going to be from maybe changing the capital gains tax rules. Maybe your principal residence is no longer capital gain exempt. I hope that doesn't happen. Or maybe they'll cap the amount or, you know, They've got a bunch of tools. Maybe one is uh, some type of speculation tax, uh, foreign tax. Although, you know, my experience has been that, you know, it's a lot of, um, I would call, landed immigrants who are buying Toronto property. I don't really see, you know, um, I guess bus loads coming from other, right, directly from the airport and people doing it. I see that it's a lot of people who are just kind of like, trying to build their portfolio in a relatively safe environment. Definitely not the majority, but that is happening. Mm-hmm. I'm meeting somebody on Thursday for that, so. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it is happening, but uh, that's not the majority. You know, it's yeah. the locals trying to buy in, I think, sure. and, you know, people trading up, and you know, in my experience, right? So. Yeah, and I think it's a whole wealth effect, too, right? Yeah. You know, uh, I know many <clears throat> people have bought in, probably even if you bought 10 years ago, your house is probably worth three times what you paid. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty close to that. Maybe it's four, maybe it's two, depending on where you live. Yeah. But, you, you know, so people go, wow, look at me, I'm a millionaire, like I've got all this money. And then they start looking at the market and kind of going, hmm, well, if I'm going to move, it's it could, where do I go, you know? And I think the real thing about this market to me is, um, is the challenge, I think, is that we're just almost... Um, like it's the markets of what's the word I'm trying to use here it's the a lot of our clients who actually want to move a lot of your clients who want to move they haven't found the place yet and because they haven't found the place yet they don't want to put their place on the market and so we've really gone through two months of probably the shortest inventory I've ever seen on the Toronto market uh, and but the good news though, and I think I, I don't want to be like Mr. You know Downer here. Uh, I think the good news is that the worst is behind us. I think right after we're in the middle of March break right now. I think right after March break, you're going to see increased um, levels of inventory. I Absolutely. Think. And I think right after Easter, you're going to see another big um, push for more inventory. And I think in May, you're going to see more inventory coming out. And if you really look at the graph of the Toronto market, it, it almost looks like it's like a double humped camel. You know, it's yeah. kind of like if this is January, 
and this would be May, June, the market, the inventory peaks, and then it drops down into June, July, August, comes back up again, September, October, November. Happens every year. So, you know, I think it's better days right now, and I sure hope, just for everyone's uh, sake, that we, we get a lot more inventory at the market. Yeah. yeah. So if you think enough people complain, you always say this all the time, if enough people complain, the government will probably do something yeah. about it. And, uh, w you know, if they introduce some measures like they did in Vancouver with the, you know, foreign buyers tax and all that, it may affect our market now, you know. What it could, yeah, I think we don't know. I think the big mystery is really is what the federal government's going to do because yeah. they're more on the taxation side on the, like, capital gains or... Absolutely. Um, and it's really curious how last year on your tax return you had to put a, start declaring the, the sale of your personal uh, residence on your tax return. I always thought that was curious, and now I'm kind of thinking, well, maybe that was the setup to, for them to track it so now they can maybe start um, taxing it. Um, you know, the other tools they have is the City of Toronto. I think they could try to come in with, their, with more land transfer tax, which is just a tax on nothing for nothing. <laughs> Um, or the Liberal government um, could come in provincially um, and do some type of measures. Uh, maybe they tax you and then they're going to take all that money and they're going to build more affordable housing. I, I don't know. I know it's an election year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's interesting. I wrote an article for like a national publication last year and I, I said in it that uh, in BC it was an election year and something was going to happen and guess what it happened and, and they brought up that tax so um, I, I think it's maybe one of those times where you kind of you know maybe sit and wait but I think there's different strategies for you know there's no one strategy yeah. and no one knows when the market's gonna crash or go up or down I don't care what they say but I think it really depends on you know your customers talking to you and kind of going like well what's my unique problem because yeah. you're so successful you've got so many really great raving fans happy clients that I know you can probably solve it the one big thing I would tell most of your customers right now is this is the time that if you're empty nesters and you're thinking about maybe should I cash out now I'm not sure where the market's going to be I think there's a great argument right now for doing what they call a sale leaseback. Mm -hmm. um, you know, where they can, you know, I know you told me all about this, but where they can basically sell their house today and stay on as a tenant for a couple of years. And that way they can really kind of get their wealth today, put it away in a bank or somewhere, and then just stay on as a tenant. Um, there's, I thought this would be something that a lot of 70 and 80 and 90 year old people would be doing. But I've been quite pleasantly surprised that so many like 45, 50, 55, six-year-old people who are kind of going, yeah, you know what, the market's been going up for 18 years. It's a real estate cycle. Things change. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, I think it's going to be interesting. But I, I don't think it's a time to be fearful, even though this video probably made more people scared. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you wrote a great article about uh, fear, not having fear in this market. I mean, yeah. it's a cycle that, uh, you know, there's strategies for both ways. Well, I think fear is healthy, first of all. You know, I mean, the only reason we're still alive today is because one of our relatives wasn't eaten by a lion, <laughs> tiger, or leopard, right? So you need to know, oh, there's a cat, run away, or you're going <laughs> to die. So we've already got that gene. Um, and a little bit of fear is actually quite helpful because you can make good decisions with a little bit of fear. But when people go into, like, anxiety, panic, or overwhelming, like, just, let's just say panic again, they make the worst decisions. I'm sure you, you know, there's times in both of our lives when we panicked, made a decision, and went, oh my God, I wish to regret it. And, and so I think our job is to help our buyers and sellers and go, listen, this isn't a panic situation. This is just, um, you know, here's some perspective so that when it comes time for you to make that right decision, you make the right decision and you don't feel like you're pressured, hassled, or living in fear. Yeah, really. Here's here's <coughs> here's the climate, really. You mm -hmm. know, and uh, you got to make do with it based on the situation you're in. Do you think it's a good time to buy, sell, hold? Unfortunately, there was a technical difficulty for the rest of that video, so I'll just have to transcribe what happened. I asked him, "Is it a good time to buy or sell?" Or and he said that, you know, it it really is personal. It's true, but he knows that generations of wealth came from long-term buy and hold. You know, like a lot of people think it's a short-term. Thing. And it is a cycle. It will go up and down. But if you hold for the long term, it, uh, it should be good. And, and, you know, every situation is different. So if you're looking to sell, it's the perfect time right now. There's never been a better time. But if you're a first time home buyer, it might be a little bit difficult. Then uh, he, sh he suggests getting together with some buddies, uh, some a couple of your friends, maybe buy a duplex, triplex, 
a fourplex, you know, rent out some rooms and make a commitment to each other, live there for at least five years. And then after that, you can decide if you want to sell, buy each other out, and uh, at least you'll be able to ride the market that way. And, and he really said it's just a personal situation. And, uh, you know, all we can do is give you some options and you can make the best decision at that time for what you want to do. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, talk and if you have any tips, uh, comments, questions or any other suggestions on what you want to hear, please reach out to me or click the link below.